Where in the world do I begin? By now, you can tell Tsuburaya's confidence got way to their heads when the show was greenlit, if not long before they gave it the go-ahead. Quite frankly, the complications and confusions that took place behind the camera made for a story that was more interesting than the series itself. With all the issues they had to deal with, from the shooting schedule being too tight for breathing space, the crew working with a severely meager budget, the boiling temperatures on the film sets, Tsuburaya hiring a production studio run by a bunch of nobodies with not enough experience to handle an ambitious project like this, monster suits that were too fragile to use for fight scenes and painted with flammable materials that occasionally put the stuntmen at risk, it's amazing the show was made at all. During development, Tsuburaya believed the show would be a smash hit for reasons I've already explained. Unfortunately for them, by the time production wrapped, the only financial update Subaraya collected was debt. They buried themselves in fees that went to the various production stages of the series, union fees, the actors, the team at Major Havoc, the mass marketing for Powered, etc. etc. They were also producing another series at the time, Gridman, which called for additional expenses to be paid for by the studio. And supposedly, the American producers took a whole chunk of the budget to go on expensive vacations in other states and gamble at casinos and whatnot. I have no idea if that part of the story is true or not, but if it is, this would be another explanation for why the quality of the show turned out as cheaply as it did, as the production had lost a considerable amount of its budget from those men who thought they deserved that money more than the rest of the crew who had a show to build. As if things weren't bad enough, Powered had an entire toy line being produced in Asia, which wasn't very successful, and the toy line, just like the actual show, never made its way to America. A video game tie-in was also made, but likewise, it wasn't a big hit. Ironically, Ultraman Great experienced these exact same problems with its toy and game merchandise. With all of this said and done, Tsuburaya Productions was almost bled dry of its financials. Many of their projects had to be cancelled, such as a proposed Gridman Sigma, and also another Ultraman series that was supposed to be set in Hong Kong. After Powered blew up in their face, the studio needed to rethink the direction Ultraman should go from there, especially to recoup their losses. Long story slightly less long, they decided to continue the production of further Ultraman shows, but they were all to be made in the domestic market from then on, starting with their 1996 series, the insanely popular Ultraman Tiga. Tiga was an instant hit in Japan. It brought the franchise back to its traditional roots that was missing in Powered. Fun and original storylines, interesting characters that are all distinct and enjoyable to watch, brand new monsters all made of material that held together very well, and all other elements that kept the franchise alive for 30 years. Namely... Like a breath of fresh air, isn't it? Now to answer the big question I asked at the very beginning of this retrospective. Despite all of the show's notorious flaws, is Ultraman Powered actually any good? Was the series nothing but a complete waste of time and money for Subaraya? Should the show just be buried and forgotten, never to be mentioned by name ever again? Well, to be honest, I don't necessarily think the show is too bad, really. Or at least, not in the way many have implied over the years. Sure, the show was weakened by the slow and badly choreographed action between the monsters and Ultraman, the plots are strongly lacking in the originality department, 
due to the show being a remake slash reboot slash spinoff of the original Ultraman. The characters are kind of derivative and bland, but I can't say for sure the show is unwatchable or anything like that. Every here and there, it has its moments that make it feel like it's still an Ultraman series. Even if the plots, locations, and effects seem rather uninspiring. I could just be speaking from a biased point of view, as Ultraman Powered was one of the first Ultraman shows I watched back in the day. Even then, I was aware the older and newer shows offered so much more than this one. Whether it was in spite of the show's obvious flaws, or because of the flaws, I still found myself entertained with the ultimate hero. And by the looks of it, I'm not the only one who shares these thoughts, as Ultraman Powered still has a bit of a fan base today, both in Japan and elsewhere. Now, where exactly does Ultraman Powered stand in Tsuburaya's eyes? Well, I suppose from their point of view, it's just another installment in their Ultra series. But maybe the titular hero and his series are something more than that. Powered was one of the first new Ultramen Japan had seen in over a decade, ever since Ultraman 80. And surprisingly, he gained a sizable fan base during his initial airing. He was popular enough to be put into stage shows, and even have direct-to-video content made about him. Recently, Powered had a Blu-ray release of his series in Japan, which has seemed to sell rather nicely, despite his lukewarm legacy. He's fondly remembered as an Ultraman for a generation, and one that helped Tsuburaya regain a foothold and face in Japanese television. I guess you could say, despite the short-term losses of his show and all the stress that came with its making, Powered ended up helping both Tsuburaya and the Ultra series. Perhaps Tsuburaya recognized this at some point, and so they decided to keep the character alive in their popular franchise by giving him much more to do in newer entries. For instance, both Powered and Great were granted a cameo in the Ultra Galaxy movie, showing up to fight Ultraman Belial on Nebula M78. And just last year, Powered and Great appeared again in yet another Ultra series, Ultra Galaxy Fight, The Absolute Conspiracy. In this new series, both foreign-made Ultramen were granted a second chance to prove themselves to audiences by fighting opponents in the traditional Ultraman fashion. Their appearance in the series was kind of short, but even so, it was such a delight not just to watch Great and Powered fight like real Ultra heroes, but it was also moving to understand that Tsuburaya was willing to give both characters an opportunity to leave an impact on audiences through stronger, faster, better choreographed action scenes. If anything, this one gesture proves that the studio does not view either character or their respective series as failures. Oh, and fun fact, in the American English dub of Ultra Galaxy Fight, Ultraman Powered's voice was dubbed by Kane Kazugi, who also played Powered's original human host, Kenichi Kai. Once Mega Orchi is hatched, and absorbs the cells cultivated inside Max, it will transform quickly into Mega Tana Orchi. At which point, planet Mikarito will be devoured and destroyed. Now, would I recommend the show to potential viewers? Well, I guess that's a little subjective. I can imagine most fans will be turned off by the quality of some of the effects, the acting, the uninspiring camera work, and, of course, the cringe-inducing fights. But you might find some entertainment in how the stories from the 1966 series are reimagined here and with new characters to drive them forward. If you can't tolerate any of it, then maybe you can enjoy it as a so-bad-it's-good product. 
which shouldn't be too hard to do, I think. Or if you just want to view it out of curiosity, I think it's worth at least one look from beginning to end. I think my personal favorite episode is Episode 5, Monstrous Meltdown. As the episode is pretty straightforward, it has some effective tension in the third act, Gaborah looks really cool, and the fight with Powered isn't half bad. Stand up, Ultraman. Stand up. Episodes 12 and 13 are also pretty decent, mostly because the fights don't feel as haphazardly staged here as they were in prior episodes, outside the opening clash between Duraco and Red King. And the danger surrounding the Balton's impending invasion was done effectively. While it's not the best finale we've seen in the franchise, it could have been so much worse. Sanders, if we drain the stabilizers, we're going down in a ball of fire. Sanders, I gave you an order! Sorry, Captain, not gonna let you stop me. Power is down 82%. We can only last a few more seconds. I can't say every single one of you will share the same reaction after watching the series, whether it be positive or negative, but if your opinion differs from everyone else, that's totally fine. If anything, you're probably better off just giving Ultraman Great a try. Putting the constant eco-themes aside, the effects and fighting in that series were at least tolerable. And the episodes were all aided by the humorous tone from the characters, which made for a more entertaining experience. Powered's more straightforward tone might hinder your chance to complete most of the series, as the absence of humor can't put a balance between the pros and cons of this entry. To hopefully deliver a stronger message about whether or not I'd suggest giving the show a chance, I'd like to end this retrospective with a quote someone else had said of the series, regarding the quality of the series and if Ultra fans should give it a watch. There's an Ultraman series for everybody, just like how there's a Godzilla movie for everybody. Whether that statement helps or not is up to you to decide. As for me, while I could never really call this Ultraman or his series one of my favorites, I do have a special fondness for them for a couple of reasons. One, for being one of the first Ultraman shows I'd ever watched, which interested me enough to seek out the original series and watch every other entry from there. And two, for what the show managed to do for Subaraya and the Ultra series, resurrecting it back to its former glory for millions of fans the world over. I hope everyone else can see it through that same lens. And even more so, I really hope everyone remembers the story of Ultraman Powered's production, because quite frankly, there isn't another one like it in all of Tokusatsu. I am so ready.